Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. Painting shadows in watercolour is such an important topic that I've divided it up into two videos. I did one last week where I told you the difference between form shadows and cast shadows. And this week we're going to have a look at cast shadows. Now if you get these right in your paintings, it will bring your paintings alive. So, are you ready? Now, last week we had a look at form shadows and I told you all about those and I also gave you some um, ideas for mixes for the colours for your shadows. So if you haven't seen that video yet, do go and watch that one because the actual mixes for the shadows, I don't repeat that in, in this particular video. So if you want to know about those colours, just pop over and watch that other video. I will link it in the description below here and I'll also put it on the card at the end of the video. So this week we're having a look at cast shadows and how they can actually enhance your paintings wonderfully if you get them right. So let's turn the camera down to the, the desk and have a look. Here I've, draw, um, here I've painted the bottom half of two trees in watercolour. So I'll just put that one aside for a moment. And we're going to put some shadows on and see what happens. Now the light is coming this way. So <laughs> Let's put our light source up there. So there's the sun. Yes, I know you're saying Anne's doing her little cutout models again. Yes, I am, because I find it's the best way to explain something. So if we paint a shadow, the light's coming this way. So obviously this side of the tree is in light and this side of the tree is in shadow. And remember from last week's video, this is a form shadow because it's forming on the actual tree itself. The tree is a form or a shape. So that's the form shadow. And here comes the cast shadow. So that will be coming away from the tree like this. So the tree is casting the shadow onto the ground. Now, shadows will always be darkest nearest to the actual object. So this bit of the shadow will be much darker than that bit. That's because the light can't get to that bit as easily as it can get to that bit. Now, what would happen, you see this is the length of the shadow. Now what would happen if there was a house in the way? Yeah, I know, Anne's at her models again. <laughs> Well, the shadow has to be that long because that's the time of day it is. So if there's a house in the way, we can't just lose that bit of shadow. What happens is that missing bit of shadow runs up the side of the house. And so many people forget that when they paint, their shadows come out to here and they magically stop where there's a building. But if the shadow has to be that long, then you have to make it that long. So let it run up the side of the building. Now let's have a look at the other tree and I'll show you something different. There's my light source again, my little sun. So let's paint this, uh, let's paint another shadow. And this time it's going to be slightly different. Let's paint the, the shadow coming away from the tree. Now this time, oh, what's happened to this? Now, why does the shadow look like that? Well, the reason is because the ground is bumpy and your shadow can tell you a story. If the ground is very smooth, then the shadow will look like that. 
If the ground is very bumpy, then you must make the shadow bumpy. And it'll be darker here near, near to the actual object. So your shadow can tell a story. And once again, let's, let's take it out to there. <clears throat> what would happen if there was a house in the way? Let's have another house. Yes, I know, Anne's been playing again. <laughs> well, the same thing applies. This bit of shadow can't just get lost. It's going to run up the side of the building. But, because the building is smooth, the shadow will be smooth. Because the ground is bumpy, the shadow will be bumpy. So you can see how your shadow can actually tell a story. So we can see that cast shadows can tell a story. It tells us about the surrounding area, whether it's bumpy or whether it's flat. It doesn't have to be out of doors. You could be looking at a still life on a table and it'll, the shadows will tell you whether the surface is a smooth table or whether the still life is sitting on a piece of material which is all lumpy and bumpy and the shadows will go up and down over the lumps and bumps. Now let's have a look at something else that's really important about cast shadows and it's all to do with perspective. Now let's imagine that we're painting um, a group of trees <clears throat> in a forest. This is just a photograph by the way, it's not my painting, <laughs> I wish it was. And let's have a look at the um, the rules, if you like, of shadows when you've got a situation like this. So let's have our little light source again. That's the sun. Now very often I see paintings where people have painted the shadows like this. And they're all pointing the same way. Now you can see that that doesn't look right, but you, maybe you don't realise why it doesn't look right. Well, I'll tell you. I'll wipe these off because I'm actually using a piece of transparency over this, so I'll wipe those off and I'll show you the reason. Okay, I've just removed those shadows now. Let's put the sun back. Now, shadows will follow the rules of perspective. And you might say, whoa, perspective, I don't like perspective. Well, it's quite simple, really. All the shadows from the trees will follow a line that will end up at the light source. So this tree here, its shadow will be there. This tree its shadow will be there. And this one, its shadow will be there. This one, the shadow will be there. This one, follow the line, its shadow will be there. This one, follow the line, its shadow will be there. So can you see that all these shadows are actually ending up at the light source? They don't come straight down in a line, all, in, all pointing in the same direction. They all go towards, or come away if, if you prefer, to the light source. Now, here is a photograph where you can see exactly that. Here's the light source, and look at these shadows. They're just like spokes of a wheel, and they're all going towards, or if you prefer, coming away from the light source. And if you get your cast sh shadows correct in a painting, it just makes the whole thing come alive. Here's a couple of photos that I've printed off that just reinforce what I've just, what I've just mentioned. Can you see here that the shadows are following the undulations of the ground and they tell you that that ground has got a bump in the middle and it's got a bump here. They don't go straight across 
and many people paint their shadows straight across like that. And if you do that, it's telling the viewer that the land is flat. But if you let your shadows go up and down, up and down over the land, just like we did on here, then it tells the viewer that the land is bumpy. The same with this one. Here we've got a big impression of a, of a footprint. Now the only thing that's telling us anything about the surroundings here are the shadows. If there weren't any shadows here, that would just be a white piece of paper. So see how the shadows can actually tell a story. Here the shadows are not very dark and they're dotted around all over the place. So we know that these little impressions are not very deep. But here, the shadows are dark and strong, telling us that those impressions are very deep. So let your shadows tell a story. So four things about cast shadows to remember. One of them is that shadows will radiate from the light source. And, there's, and that's your perspective. Shadows will always be darkest nearest to the object that's casting the shadow. And shadows will show you something about the surrounding area, whether it's flat and smooth, or whether it's lumpy and bumpy. So let your shadows tell a story. If you would like more videos like this, then please consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon, because that will let you know when I upload another video. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.